All right, everybody, Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. This is going to be Isaiah 66, the commentary, part B. All right, let's go to Isaiah 66, and uh, let's see. We're going to do uh, verse 14. And when you see this, your heart shall rejoice, and your bones, and your bones shall flourish like an herb. And the hand of the Lord shall be known toward his servants and his indignation toward his enemies. All right, let's go to, what about bones? Where do we read about bones? And no, we're not talking about uh, Dr. McCoy in Star Trek. Yeah, I'm old. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 1 bones people the hand of the lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about and behold there were very many in the open valley and lo they were very dry and he said unto me son of man can these bones live and i answered o lord god Thou knowest, oh yeah, God knows. Again he said unto me, Prophesy upon these bones, and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and bring, uh, and bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you. And ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Uh, that word breath, and when you read wind and spirit, as in God breathed Adam, and he became a living soul, whether it's in Hebrew or in the Greek, um, breath, wind, spirit, it's uh, words that have similar meanings uh, in the Hebrew in actually in the Greek uh, when it talked about a mighty rushing wind when it talked about the uh, when the apostles were gathered together on the day of Pentecost if you know what I'm talking about or was a mighty rushing wind the spirit came upon them that word is actually pneuma where they get the word pneumatic ear tools yeah so it's kind of a synonym, wind, breath, air, spirit. So, and put breath in you, and ye shall live, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above but there was no breath in them. Hmm. Verse 9. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Then he said unto me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, Our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off from our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, O my people, and brought you up out of your graves. And shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live, and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall ye know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord." Well, this is the resurrection, right? 
In Hebrews 11.35, it says, Women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Huh. Did you know there's a resurrection and then there's a better resurrection? I guess the... Uh, Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I, I know, but I don't know. I know a little bit, but not enough to teach on it, so. Okay. In Revelation 20, and verse 5, we read, But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Which is the introduction to eternity, people. So God's friends are going to be resurrected, and his enemies, well, let's take a look at Isaiah 66 and verse 15. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. Wow. All right. How about 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 6? Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense or payback, tribulation, which is trouble, seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. And to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, Ah, there's that fire, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. I did a video on obeying the gospel. You might want to take a look at that. And that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord, and from the glory of his power. When he shall come to be glorified in his saints, and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Wherefore also we pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling, and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power, that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and ye in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. In Hebrews 12.29 it says, For our God is a consuming fire. How about Second Peter chapter 3? verse 8 second peter chapter 3 verse 8 but beloved be not ignorant of this one thing that one day is with the lord as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day the lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but is long suffering to usward not willing that any should perish but that all should come to repentance but the day of the lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens, being on fire, shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. 
Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot and blameless. Back to Isaiah 66, verse 15. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and to rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many. In Revelation 19, 14, And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. In Revelation 14, 20, And the winepress was trodden without the city, and blood came out of the winepress, even unto the horse's bridle, by the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. That's a lot of blood, people. That's like the entire population of the world minus God's people. Now, in Isaiah 66, verse 21, it says, And I will also take of them for priests and for Levites, saith the Lord. Well, we'd already read about that. It says, you know, those that make it into the kingdom are going to be priests of the Lord. We're going to be servants. Now, let's see. Let's skip let's skip to verse 24. Isaiah 66:24. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. For their worm shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. Well, Jesus said in Mark 9 that uh, verse 42 and whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, it is better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he were cast into the sea. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that shall never be quenched, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Ah, okay. Let's go to Isaiah 66 in verse 22. For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I shall make, shall remain before me, saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. All right, let's go to Revelation 21 and we're going to close this out. Verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. Yeah, they got burned up. And there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, Neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. Isn't that what Christ said on the cross? It is finished. Well, now it is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, and I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen. <laughs>